Welcome to the Sling and the Biscuit podcast and program, the new Sling and the Biscuit podcast. This is going to be episode three of the new podcast. Dave Wheeler, my co-host, the amazing guy that I've had the last two episodes, is off on holidays this week. Uh, I'm sure he's spending time with his beautiful wife and kids right now as we speak. Uh, Dave will be back hopefully next week, if not the week after. Uh, for this week's podcast, I have a guest that has been a personal friend for years. Uh, I played together with him at VIU. I've, I've said it before in the vlog, but I'll say it now. He played, I practiced with the team. I never really played. I only played one game. I think Sweden's had 12, and I think 10 games one year. Uh, we had endeavors in Sweden together at the Love Shack, the infamous Love Shack in Flemingsburg, Sweden. Liam Sweeney, personal friend, and uh, welcome to the podcast, my friend. It's a pleasure to have you today. Glad to be here. Glad to be back. Um, I would think I was the guest on uh, episode three of season one, so episode season two, or sorry, episode three, season two. Full circle. Yeah, it is, it is a privilege to have you, my friend. We've got some exciting things we're going to be talking about. First off, I just want to say thanks to the amazing folks at Sheath uh, for the, the for presenting sponsor for Powering the Podcast every week, Sheath Underwear. Um, we'll get more into that a little bit later on. Um, also, I want to say thank you to everybody who has supported the podcast last two episodes. I mean, I know we're recording right now on a Wednesday, so we're halfway through last week's podcast. Uh, but the first episode uh, of the new podcast did around 8,000 listens, the first episode uh, this week's right now. I think we're only Wednesday and we're coming up on 5,000. It's it's amazing. So thank you everybody for the support. If you're coming from the old podcast to the new podcast, if you discover the podcast on TikTok from the crazy reels and clips I've been posting on there, thank you. However you ended up here, thank you so much. The viewers of the week. Um, we're going to start doing viewers of the week very, very soon. I know my uncle Louie, who lives in Australia, my dad was telling me the other day, he listens to the podcast in Australia. I think it's, what time is it right now? You have an Australian? In your family, I have an Aust- I have an Australian. Well, he, he's he's a, he's from Brandon, but he lives in Australia now. So a little, little, bit, Brandon. little bit different, but yeah, good old Uncle Louie. He's he's living. He's listening to the podcast. So thank you to him, and thank you to everybody who listens to the podcast. We got some exciting stuff to talk about to you this week. I want to talk to you about first off. We're going to talk about Andrew Tate, the, the man who was just taking over the internet. We'll get to him in a second. I know Sweens has some hot Holy. takes. What, hold, what hold, guy, hold back. What a guy. Give me th- what a guy. Thirty <laughs> seconds. Thirty seconds. We'll get to it. We're going to talk about. The business side of pro hockey we're going to talk about like making money like actually making money playing professional hockey there's a lot of things to go into that people want it people think it looks cool we're going to tell you how it really is playing in sweden the import situation all the endeavors that we had some untold stories maybe from being in flemingsburg and uh, we hope that uh, whether you're listening in the car apple spotify at the gym maybe you're making lunches for the kids whatever you're doing maybe you're mopping the house i don't know but it is a privilege to be with you and thank you. First off, the first topic I guess we're going we're gonna to kick into for this week is uh, Mr. Andrew Tate. He has taken the internet by storm. If you don't know who Andrew Tate is, he's basically uh, a darker, bald man with a great beard, great front set of teeth, and has taken the internet over with hot takes on dating, on women, on life, on, on just how to make money, how to get rich, all this kind of stuff. And like my entire TikTok for you page and everything is just covered with this guy. Like I can't scroll without finding more clips of him. It's it's become interesting. I've kind of gotten to like dig into it a little bit to kind of peel back the layers and kind of figure out who he is and like what he's all about. Uh, he had this, this clip the other day talking about how uh, trusting a, a man in a pressure situation. He says, take a ball, take a foam ball, whatever you want, and throw it at one of your boys, see what happens, and then throw it at your girl and see what happens. So I thought, I'm, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. So I go to the gym the other day. My trainer, Brian, Brian Collins, my trainer, didn't say anything to him. I picked up a lacrosse ball at the gym, and I said, hey, think fast. Chucked it at him, instinctually caught it. Not a word of a lie. Literally just caught it out of midair. He's like, whoa, what are you doing? I was like, thank you for proving my point. I came home from the gym after. I had a lacrosse ball in my bag. And I walked up to my woman. I was like, think fast. I threw the ball. What do you think happened? She did like one of these like things. Like she these. did like a Jesus take the yeah. wheel. Like, a, ah! <laughs> like, like, like as if like someone was going to hurt her. It's just like a little ball. And she's like, what was that for? I was like, you literally proved Andrew Tate's point. So, um... Sweens, please, please go off. I know you got some opinions on it, but I just ah, want to well, kind of get that out of the way. Well, I, I just want to say, uh, everyone's forgetting the fact that he was, I think he was a three-time world champion kickboxer before all of this. Four times. So he's, he's four times, yeah, and he's retired now. Um, and uh, you know what happens when uh, you retire from sports? Uh, the money dries up. So Andrew Tate is a, uh, I won't swear for, just for your dad's sake. Uh, I know yes. Lessons. I won't swear, but he is a, freaking genius for what he's doing right now in terms of algorithms and it's it's actually so smart so i i believe andrew i I believe from reading and researching andrew tate has like this like program that uh is uh teaching is like teaching you how to be like a a a man's man in this world and not be soft or anything to be a hustler 
yeah. wants you to be a hustler. Yeah, basically. that too. Hustlers University. And it's like, it's like, and he, and then if you sign up your friends, you get a kickback. So I don't know what, you, I don't know, but it's looking like one of uh, the old uh, MLM pyramid schemes. Uh, and every so time he's on, if, a, if I oh, could, yeah, if I if I could for a second, let me back you up because I think you're missing a couple points. So Probably. Andrew Tate, he's, he's a four time world champion boxing champion, um, finishes sports. He's running low on money. He decides to open up like a, a webcam business where he has beautiful women on the webcams talking to maybe some single lonely men, telling him, hey, like my man, he, he, my man's just not cutting it. I wish I could find a man who could take care of me. Just hosing these guys for thousands upon thousands upon thousands. And so he's taking a cut of that. So the, the girls make the money. He makes the money. He gets rich. And then he, he built a business off this. And then basically get him to the point now where he has what's called Hustlers University, where he will essentially yes. teach you how to make money. For $49 a month, he'll teach you all how to finesse, how to haggle, how to like become a businessman, become an entrepreneur, invest in yourself and become a true uh, top G, as he calls it. And so that system is $49 a month. You sign up, you can refer your friends to get a kickback. So I have Hustlers University. I tell Sweens to sign up. He signs up, I get paid, and the, the pyramid scheme continues and goes back on and so forth. And he's the one making the money on that $49 a month. And it, it's just a genius scheme because we've talked about this, how he's, he's on every clip how he's on every TikTok, on every YouTube clip, every YouTube short. Well, he every had, single he had time, Nelk, he had Nelk fly out to Croatia to interview him. Hmm. Like that's and that podcast has eight million views right right now as a recording right now. And what does he tell people to do that don't know him? Google him. Like, and I don't know if anyone, I don't know if, yeah, but a lot of people might not know how necessarily how algorithms work um, compared to like me and you. Just like I. For a lot of people that don't know, I do a lot of video creation work uh, in business format. Travis obviously does the YouTube stuff. Um, and you're always, whether it's for your clients or you're for yourself, you're always trying to, you know, get something to go viral online, get, get more eyes, get more attention, draw in more views. Because for that, for the, my client, that means more money in his pocket, which means return on a, uh, return revenue for me asking for more ads. So by Andrew asking people to Google them, what do they do? They look them up on YouTube. They look them up on TikTok, Instagram. Uh, Google um, and it's through these viral clips so just saying in this ridiculous just some some of the stuff is just absolutely ridiculous and just like <laughs> and like like to, can, can we can we can we you know, can we talk about we have to talk about the one clip the one clip where he's like <laughs> he broke the internet this week or so <laughs> which one so, um, there's a lot I the one where he's the one uh, where he goes um, uh, basically along the lines of uh Guys don't want older women because uh, uh, they've had too much dick. They only want eighteen and nineteen year olds because they haven't had dick. I think I, I, that clip has been everywhere. That clip got got Andrew Tate to, um, notoriety on the Apple News uh, notification bar. That's when you know you hit a big. Yeah, they want it because people uh, want Tate off uh, TikTok and Instagram now for being misogynistic. Which I mean, to be fair, they do have a point, but. Like as far as just like how able to grow yourself as an online and like in the last month, it's all you see on TikTok when I'm scrolling through now. It's insane. And I will say that there are some clips that he does put out that like, they're, they're pretty messed up. And I'd like to think that he's trolling. Like, I can't see a logical human being in 2022 actually like saying this stuff and believing it. I could be wrong. There are some really crazy people out there. But there are also some things that he says that like really, really makes sense. Like I mentioned with the, the ball trick, ball trick, throw a ball at your dude, throw a ball at your girl. Like... Like these are very like nail on the head type of things, and he raises up good points. But it's interesting. Like he's he's popping off. He's getting all this notoriety. However, he doesn't actually have a TikTok account. Like people just keep reposting him. Like he's not actually doing it. Like it's it's just a they're doing the work genius. for him. Like let let's just I don't know if this is actually an account. I'm just making like I just like millionaire mindset or mindset something like just one of those like mindset TikTok or like money millionaire motivational TikTok accounts or Instagram. He's everywhere on them everywhere so like oh, like yeah. he owns the internet right now he is the internet's top g it's as top as he calls himself yeah. we could talk about this for hours but if you haven't had a chance do yourself a favor if you know you you can pull over in the car or maybe you know all this kind of stuff search up andrew tate on youtube i know i'm helping to the cause but like just some of the clips you'll find are just incredible insane speaking of cars i know he has the one quite he has the one thing where he says he's never lets a woman drive his cars Trav, would you let a woman drive your car I am a man 
who had a previous woman of mine crash my car. So I think I'm validated to speak on this, okay? So Andrew Tate says, I would let one of my boys drive my car because if he crashed it, he'd be like, bro, I got a second job. I will pay for it. I got you. A woman will not. Every excuse. Oh, well, it was my fault. And this happened, that happened. My situation. Granted, this is back when I was playing junior. We played junior or junior hockey. Big win. Fellows go to the team bar. We're having a good time. Time to drive home. It's about 2 p.m. 2, 2 p.m. That's a big night. It, it's a long night. That's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I woke up in the ditch. I couldn't figure out where I was. <laughs> what did you guys get up to? <laughs> this this is also when I was drinking. Now now I haven't drank for almost five years now. But so congratulations on drinking. that, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, it's good in the pocketbooks and it's good on the calorie waistline. Anyway, um, so two a.m. I've had a few to drink. My lady at the time has not. She's like, I'll drive home. I'll drive your truck. Give me the keys. And I'm like, okay. So she says, which way do I, I do to go home, back to Winnipeg from Arborg? And I said, well, take um, take Highway 6. You're going to get less deer. I don't want to hit something. Don't take Highway 7. She thinks because I'm drinking that I don't know what I'm talking about. So she takes Highway 7. I said, there are so many deer. Don't do it. Ten minutes later, she's going down the highway, 110. Boom. Smokes a deer. Like like the deer is in 10,000 pieces on the side of the road. There's no saving old Willie. We get out, look at the car. The airbags have gone off. I'm crippled out of my mind. I'm, I see air, like all the smoke from the airbags, and I'm like, Jesus, like am I dead? Like I, I don't know what's going on. Get out, truck is totally just destroyed in the side, it ruins the car, and then what happened? Oh, it wasn't my fault. How was I supposed to know? There's a deer that came out of nowhere. How was I supposed to stop? I didn't know. Blah blah blah. And it, it proves Andrew Tate's point. Chick crashes your car. A lot of excuses. Dude crashes your car. Bro, I got you. I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll fix it. I'll pay for it. He brings up a very valid point. At least in my scenario specifically, because. That was my truck, and now I own a bicycle. <laughs> you know what? If you if you feel that way, um, just only own it on a stick shift car. How many girls drive stick? I can think of five right now off the top of my head that drive stick. Here, here's how we'll, we'll settle this. This is why I own, hey, the this, this is why I own a stick car. <laughs> no one can drive it, <laughs> Le- which which is a pain in the ass sometimes. Actually, when I in your in your situation, I need someone to drive my car home. Sweens. Shut up. If you're in the uh, YouTube version in the comment section, leave a comment. Let us know. Would you, would you let your wife, would you let somebody else drive your nice car? Or any endeavors or experiences. We'll move on from the Andrew Tate talk because I'm sure half the people have already left. Uh, you're going to notice also to the uh, background for the podcast today, a little bit different. Uh, moving out day is coming up soon for me to take off, leave Winnipeg. Uh, the apartment is empty. All the furniture, well, half the, the furniture has been returned back to Ikea. Uh, actually, I uh, went, went to Ikea the other day with, with uh, my girlfriend and uh, take half the stuff back. And they apparently they have a new return policy. So over the COV over the last two years, apparently a lot of people are buying furniture. And because Ikea has a 365 day, no questions asked return policy, people buy it, their lease lasts a year, they bring it back on day 364, get a full refund, right? Makes sense. You're basically like renting Ikea furniture for free, don't pay a dime. And I'll be honest, I was guilty of it. I did it on my last apartment. I bought furniture and then I just brought it back before I went to Sweden, got all my money back, it was great. So I told her same thing. Let's just take the furniture back, get the refund, then whatever. We go there, and then the head manager comes out, and he's like, uh, "Sir, we can only give you fifty uh, percent, but we can't give you the full refund." I was like, "Why not?" He's like, "Well, there's scratches here, there's chips there," and I was like, "What are you talking about?" I looked down. He walks away, and I was like, "No, no, 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 no! Come back here, come back here!" And then the, my girlfriend, she says, "She's like, no, don't, don't do this. I, we don't, we don't." Need. I'm like, "No, I am not letting this man take one hundred fifty dollars from me because there's a scratch on the damn table." Very, I was very respectful about it. Manager comes back and he's a he's a big guy. He looks almost like a football linebacker, dark complexion fellow. And I said, "Sir, all due respect, I see the one table, and, and I know this is the cheap table, so I don't really care if, if he dings me on fifty percent on this." I said, "Yeah, I get it. You know, you're totally in the right. Dinged up. These other two pieces, I want you to show me where the damage is." And I looked him right in the eyes, and he looked me up, he looked me down, and I could see go off in his mind. He's like, "I don't have the time to deal with this guy. This guy is gonna fight me for the next thirty minutes on this hundred and fifty bucks, sir. Take your hundred percent." You're good. Have a great day. And he, so he turns around. He walks around the corner. And I hear him talking to some co-worker in the back. He's like, I've had enough of these people trying to return their whole entire apartments. We're not the Home Depot. We're not a rental service. We sell furniture. Got the full <laughs> refund, though. So it was great. Uh, I mean, I'm surprised someone hasn't actually made a, like, Airbnb, Uber, or sorry, uh, Verbo, uh, Turbo. Turbo, Turo, Turo of like furniture yep. renting. Oh, you can rent your, you can rent my furniture for two weeks. Yeah, right from IKEA. <laughs> Straight <laughs> I, cash commission. I, IKEA took the market. 
So, sir, you have spent $20,000 on Ikea furniture in the last two months and returned every penny of it. Care to explain? A little suspicious on our, our end. We, we need to do a little investigating. I just couldn't make up my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, um, I haven't been to Ikea in a while. Uh, I used to, every time I was go to Vancouver, I'd always go stop and get the Swedish chocolate. Miss that stuff so much. They don't have the same Swedish chocolates and the same goodies in the Canadian IKEA that they do in the Swedish one. Actually, I think they have the dines, honest to God, they have the di- they have the dimes, the score ones, but they're not the, they don't they, taste as good. Yeah, they have the dimes and and they're okay, but the Kex is where it's at. And there's no mm-hmm. Kex in IKEA. We need Kex Claude, the the Kit Kat wafer chocolate bar. If you if you ever looked it up online, uh, K E X Kex chocolate in Sweden is my favorite chocolate bar. I know some people disagree. They're like Trav. That chocolate bar sucks. It's like a thin, poor man's Kit Kat. I like it. A little, you know, a little bit less chocolate, a little bit more wafer, less sugar. I like it. Two, uh, I think two, 250 calories for a whole bar. It's cash money. I would um, actually like to see what was in the vlog more. Was it you eating fast food or you having a Kex at the bus, at the bus stop? Or Chex, as we should say. I think because I was so rushed with the chocolate bars, I didn't get a chance to film all of them. When I'm sitting down at a Burger King or when I was... Um, yeah, got a chance to film everything. By the way, I guess this is a little like vlog or podcast exclusive to talk about. Um, so when I came home from Sweden, I was weighing 223 on the season, or I guess coming home. And the goal was 210. We got to get to 210, cut 10 to 15 pounds, going to be easier on the knees and the hips. I can tell you right now, we came home, I think it was middle of April-ish. We are August 10th today, 209 as of this morning. We have cut 14 pounds. Skinny Let's Travis go. back. You see my... I don't know if you can see in the video podcast. Remember when you used to bug me that I'm skinny? And right? yeah, I got like no neckline. But actually, I will say this. You were a lightweight uh, when we were over in Sweden. Wow. That was 208. I was 208 pounds then. I'm 209 right now. Oh, I mean, if you looked at the size, like not to be mean or anything, but the size you had VIU versus like that's that's one year. That's one full year. You lost so much weight. No, that was two years, Swings, because I, I, I was at VIU with you. I played nowhere because I couldn't stick on a team. I couldn't even catch a flu that season. Funny enough. No, no, then, no, no, uh, no, no. The first Sweden year, the next year. Yeah, first year of Sweden. You were still, you were skin, you were pretty skinny then. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but first year at VIU, I believe I reported at two thirty six. <laughs> yeah, you. Were... <laughs> okay, has anyone heard the story of what you did the week before you came to camp? Yeah, why, why don't you explain it before we get into a um, little quick commercial break about um, uh, two thirty six, Trav? This is like. This is what we were doing, like spring skates uh, in Parksville. Um, yep. You were telling me this story, but <laughs> we're just like, we're driving to uh, Parksville, which is about like 30 minutes from Nanaimo uh, to go skate. Yep. And uh, <laughs> Travis, uh, we're just talking about like, Travis is talking, oh yeah, I'm just like, I'm dropping pounds right now. And I was like, how much did you weigh at the start of the year? And he's like, 235. I was like, that's, pretty, that's fucking big. That's that's a lot. Like that's five pounds less than Freddie Anderson. And Freddie Anderson is an absolute unit. And I was like, "What did you like?" And then we start talking about your diet. You're like, "Yeah, I just I decided to crush only chocolate covered croissants. I believe the week before." It was Nutella croissants, the powdered no. shirt on top. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah, you know, it is. The logic was, uh, yeah, I wanted to carb up. <laughs> I was treated like a bodybuilding competition. I thought if I stocked up on carbs and stocked up on on uh, fuel, I was like, "Oh, I'll have a great camp." Well. <laughs> no, that, that's thirty pounds more than I am right now, and like, I've I've seen through like obviously you don't notice it like right away, but like if I was to put an extra thirty pound plate on me on the ice right now, I know the difference it would make. It's it's why I injured my knee last year at Christmas time. So we're talking about ten pounds, fifteen, twenty. Like how much more strain is in the body over every butterfly, every practice, over the week, over every game, over the season? Like it, I'd, I'd be curious if somebody maybe listen to the podcast is like good with math and good with science kind of stuff. And so me at, let's say, 209 right now compared to me at 225, over five practices a week, two games a week, let's just say hypothetically, how much less stress am I throwing on my knee and on my hips over the course of a season? I'm, I'm curious. I don't know how you calculate that, but if somebody does know, please reach out. I'd be very, very curious about that. Yeah, someone, uh, someone good in physics or something, please figure that out. I'm actually interested to see what that is. Actually, funny you mentioned that. You know who is good at physics? Who? The amazing folks at Sheath Underwear. And I'm going to tell you why. So the Sheath is our presenting sponsor here for the Sing on the Biscuit podcast, the new Sing on the Biscuit podcast. And Sheath Underwear have cutting edge technology. They have what they call the ballpark pouch. And so if you're a dude, if you're my dad listening in the car, 
Sometimes your twig and your giggleberries get stuck together in your shorts. Long day, you're biking, you're at work, you don't have the luxury of bringing five pairs of gish with you. And it gets stuck to the side of your leg, it's all sweaty, it's musky, it's gross. With the ballpark pouch, it separates and segregates everything. So you have your twig in one compartment, you have your giggleberries in another, and they are separated. So there's room to breathe and there's air, so everything stays fresh, it doesn't get as stinky as fast. And I'm gonna be honest, like whether we're talking about the shirt that I'm wearing right now, this isn't even the underwear or the actual sheath underwear itself. They have some type of cooling technology. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, it's always cool. It's consistently cooling. And it is honestly got the best underwear I have ever owned. There is many underwear companies out there. There is sheath and there is the rest. If you're gonna go get some, use the code biscuit69. Yes, the code confirmed. I confirmed this over the other day. Biscuit, B-I-Z-K-I-T, 69, biscuit69. It's gonna get you 20% off everything at sheath.com. Again, thank you so much to the folks at Sheath for responding to the podcast, making it possible. And uh, yeah, pick some up. Could have used a pair of those when I was working at the uh, Cowboys tent uh, this past or last month. So thank you for that amazing commercial break from the the folks at Sheath and powering the podcast. Let's from talking about business. Let's talk about a different type of business on the pro hockey side of things. So, um, Swings and I spent a little bit of time in Sweden. We didn't get paid, obviously, but this upcoming season, I'm I'm actually going to be getting paid. I'm going to be getting a paycheck this season. 125 a week, by the way. Somebody corrected me in the comment section on last week's podcast. I said I was getting 525 a month. You can tell one of us has been taking pucks off the head for a living. Well, for 15 years, whatever it is. Like, oh, I'm not all there. So forgive me if my math is off sometimes. If you're listening to the podcast, you're like, I just picture somebody in the car just like hammering the steering wheel, punching the brake, like, damn it, it's $500, not five. Relax. My math sucks. Anyway, so the business side of, of pro hockey. And specifically, like I've noticed, like through you know making videos with me playing hockey in Sweden the last two years, and now in the Fed with Motor City, being together with Swedes, I think that there's been a lot of eyeballs turned towards like the minor side of pro hockey. Like we're not talking about the guys making half a million, a million dollars, like big money in the show in the American League or even in the coast where they're making. I think most. I think the minimum is about three thousand a month. I know like a rookie level is. I think 475, it might be 575 on the coast. I could be wrong. Maybe somebody can fact check me on that, but I believe that is the minimum. They have so, a, they also have, they have a cap. I believe they do have a cap down in the, like the SP and the, in the coast. They have a salary cap? They, they, uh, a weekly cap of how much you can spend on players per week or something like, something like that. I believe, I believe, don't quote me on that. I could be totally wrong. Okay. So like there, there is a, a business side to hockey that you know paying the bills and stuff and that sounds great like the idea of like i can go from let's say here in winnipeg to stockholm sweden i can go to detroit michigan i can go to carolina i can go to all these awesome places i can play hockey traveling swedes are having fun have the time of their life traveling and don't get don't get me wrong it's awesome it is great and i was actually my agent you know obviously uh you know swedes knows my agent adrian soon he was giving me shit the other day he's like trev you must have a great life. You just make videos all day. You play hockey and you know you pay your rent in the first and you're good to go. And I said, yeah, I got a pretty sweet life. Like I'm not going to complain. Like I'm blessed to do what I do. But at the same time, like there are things to like hockey that people don't pick up on. Like in my neck of the woods, taking care of the body, the nutrition, the weight. Because like there's somebody coming to take my job. Somebody else out there wants my $125 a week. There's lots of them out there. And just like to like to be open-minded enough to go to places where you're not comfortable at. Like let's say like from Winnipeg to Michigan and living in Detroit. I, I've never been to Michigan. Well, I've been to Michigan, but I've never lived there before. That's going to be new. I got to be open-minded and say, there's no Ikea. There's no, like there's no trains like in Sweden. There's like, this is not Sweden. This is going to be different. And it's going to take three or four weeks to get accustomed to that, but it's fine. Be open-minded. New team, new chemistry, new style of play, new game. Like overall, like the North American to the European, like there are so many changes and it, may seem like fun when you're watching the videos or even online but like in reality like there's a lot of stress to it and there's a lot of changes and a lot of like i don't want to say hardships because like playing hockey for a living isn't hard like it's not well it is hard well, but you're not hard I, to I, was about to, I was about to say I, it's pretty hard <laughs> it, it's hard but when you compare it to like you're playing hockey for a living or you got to be an accountant and you got to answer to some dick at a head office who's like liam liam Where's that spreadsheet I asked for this app? Like, dude, that sucks. If, if you're listening to the podcast and you're that guy, I feel really sorry for you. I'm sorry that your boss is asking you for spreadsheets and barking down your ass because that sucks. Playing hockey does not. Playing hockey is great. But he's, he's, getting, of... he's, getting, he's getting paid a lot more to do that, though, than, uh, than playing in the Fed. 
if you're answering to your boss for spreadsheets making 125 a week, quit and go go like go work somewhere else. Somebody go. will hire you. I will please, hire you. Maybe please not. go to the please go to the labor board about the 125 dollars you're receiving a week. Workers' compensation. You need to file a claim. I promise you. I will help you <laughs> in the process. But the, the point being, and, and Swings, I want your take on this. Is just like how how different pro hockey really is from what you see on TV and what you see online in the vlog and what maybe you may think that it is, especially the minor levels. Uh, well, I'll tell you a story behind, behind that. It's like when I was 20 years old, I was so naive about the whole thing. Like all you hear about is like, oh yeah, that guy's getting, going overseas, you get paid, you know, you, you got a car, you know, food's covered, they got a place to live. Keep in mind, this guy uh, that's doing that uh, played in the O and then played, uh, Played like had four cups of coffee in the A before he went overseas to Germany and is getting all his shit, uh, all his stuff covered. So, um, and then you have to remember that you are a guy coming out of junior A, junior B. Uh, you are not going to the Dell one. You are going to Germany four or five. Uh, you you have to put your you have to pay your dues, and you know what? Not everything is going to be covered for a lot of guys, especially like maybe in Germany it might, but d definitely not in Sweden. The teams, there's no money uh, at the division two and three level unless a team is loaded and wants to move up. And they're picking up the, the best of the best. They're picking up division one guys. And I was pretty naive and I was like, yeah, I want to like have a salary and all this and that. I remember my GM just looking at me like, what, what the hell is this guy talking about? He's not going to get this. And it was until the next year when I started getting more serious, or sorry, after when I was in university, and I started, you know, I got a couple serious offers when. I wanted to go overseas and play during COVID. And I realized, oh wow, there is like no money to go around at all. It, there's a budget that has to be met every single year and every single week. And somebody's got to got to pay the tab. Like we were literally just talking about this before we started recording. But like in the Fed right now for Motor City. Now I'm not an accountant. I don't balance the budget. I'm just using hypothetical numbers. So please don't grill me if I'm somewhat inaccurate. So I make $125 a week. That's $500 a month. You times that by two goalies. Times that by 70. 13 forwards but by the time you work it out over the course of a seven to eight month season we're talking a hundred thousand dollars so somebody in the organization just for players alone has to stroke a check for a hundred thousand dollars to keep players at practice players on the ice let alone the ice time the rink let's just pretend for a second that they got the rink for free somebody gifted them the rink somebody was like i'll get you a zamboni i'll get you the ice everything we'll pay the for driver, bags the bus the driver Everything is free. This is just the free world, right? This is this is the hypothetical world that some people do live in, but this is now our world. You need to make $100,000 to break even. And I think that's a pretty big win if you can break even on the season, let alone if you actually make money. But so many teams don't do that. So you have to think when we're talking about making 500 a week, well, so our salary for players is $3 million. Like, where does that money come from? And whether we're talking about like women's hockey, I think maybe women's hockey may be a little bit different because it's, it's newer. Right? So people can't expect the best women in the world to make a full-time salary, make $500,000 a year, $100,000 a year. Who's cutting the check? Right? Like if I, go, if I walked in the boss's office tomorrow and said, hey, uh, I want to make $100,000. And then when the boss makes $70,000, he's going to tell me to go pound sand. He said, get out of my office. Why would I pay you as the boss $30,000 more than I make as the owner? I put in all the work. But in hockey and in sport, in women's professional hockey, so many people think like that because hockey is not a real job. There's no union. There's no labor board. People want their money. I get that. But that's not how it works. There is it really, no, really isn't. There is no minor pro players association. That's for sure. Some of the some of the stories I've heard or some of the things that we've been through, there is no minor pro or amateur players union. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a taste if maybe you're, you're new for the people that have found the podcast or TikTok. So... During the 2020 season, um, I moved to Sweden with Sweden's funny enough, and we went from here to playing Flemingsburg in the Stockholm area. During the time that we were there, we were promised an apartment with pictures, and we saw the pictures, and the place that we ended up at was not the place with the pictures. I remember looking at the pictures, looking at the place, and I'm like, this is like comparing like apples to asparagus. Like There's nothing in common here outside of they're both in Sweden. Right? They're very, very different places. So we go to live there. Um, we're supposed to get picked up from the airport when we have flown over to Europe. Now, this is my first time ever going to Europe. And so when you're factoring in door to door, we're talking about a you know 17 hour transit 
right? By the time like I walked into the Toronto Pearson Airport, go through the check-in, you know, wait at my gate, flight over to Germany, layover, flight to Sweden, like we're talking like a 20-hour endeavor. Get to the airport, supposed to have a ride. Oh, sorry, nobody can pick you up. You guys are gonna have to find your way there. Well, I don't speak the language. I don't have a cell phone plan. I gotta find Wi-Fi somehow and learn how to read Swedish. I have no idea where anything is. Like how, I can't, like, so that situation specifically, Sweden's had to find his own way to the place. I was lucky enough where I got picked up by somebody who on Instagram was like, hey, you need anything? Yeah, how about a ride? Perfect, hence Big Save Dave in the vlog. But stuff like this, we would go into the coach's office and say like, dude, like, we are literally living in a tool shed in somebody's backyard. There's no, there's no blinds. There's no doors. Like it's a tool shed. Sweden like, doesn't have a pull? bed. <laughs> Sweden doesn't have a bed. There's, I won the bet. We, we actually, we played rock, paper, scissors <laughs> for everything in this relationship from when we moved in together to when I finally left. Like whether we're talking about, you know, who's carrying groceries home, who's sitting where on the bus. Who's, who's paying for the coffee, who's, who's throwing Anything. up the coffee cups, everything. And I if lose you, twice. The dishes too, especially yeah. the dishes. The dishes okay. was a big one that we rock, paper, scissors over. But I lost every rock, paper, scissors, except for the one rock, paper, scissors that actually mattered was who got the bed and who got the sofa. I won the bed. I swept him three straight too in that rock, paper, scissors. I'll never forget it. So he won tough. everything else after that. I never won anything, but I did win that. But so we're living in this shed. Swings is on a couch. We got no doors. The place smells like there's rotting bodies outside. We're in a tool shed. We're getting hoses. This place is like $1,500 a month. Like literally, it's more money to live in the shed than this one bedroom apartment in that I'm in right now, podcasting in, that opened up two years ago. Like, stuff like this doesn't make sense. And we're going to the coach. Come on, like, what is going on here? Like, we have a bucket. We have yet, a bucket for dripping water from the toilet. Yeah. Like, can we please get some help here? Oh, we'll, we'll figure it out another day. Coach, where are my sticks? When I signed, you said there was going to be sticks. Oh, they're they're coming. They're coming. They're just at the store. Well, can we go to the store? Different time. Different time. We're not going yet. Not yet. I think I think, I think we also have to say, but Trav's doing that voice because the uh, the coach uh, was a Yvonne. He was from Slovakia. Yes. So he was had a very thick Eastern European accent. Anyways, continue. He yeah, he sounded Russian, but he was Slovakian. I, I remember uh, just. He, he never smiled. I never saw this guy smile one time. Actually, sorry, that is a lie. I did see him smile one time. He, t he says to me, uh, I, was, I was in the locker room one day on a Sunday. I was just stretching, doing some exercises. He comes in, he says, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just stretching out, coach. How about you? Oh, I just came from Ikea. The salmon? Have you ever tried the salmon? I said, no, I haven't tried the salmon. I like the meatballs. Though. He says, oh, the salmon and the sauce is incredible. The sauce, the salmon, incredible. And he walked out, but he smiled to that. That was the only time I ever saw him smile. Random, but that was that. Um, Why don't you stop finally, fuck? <laughs> yeah, he actually, I remember he did tell me that after uh, after a game. It was a 3-2? Three th three three, it was like a 3-2, something like that? And, uh, well, you made like 45 saves, I think. Hold on, let, let, let's back it up, though. He did have some validity to it. First game, I got pumped, I think, eight goals and 35 shots. Tough game for the first game in like three years. Second game... I think I got 48 or 49 shots and we ended up losing 4-2 empty netter so we lost 3-2 save and... of the year in I think that was the save of the year game yeah that, that was the save of the year game with the diving glove save on the goal and that's on YouTube by the way if you haven't seen it I'll put a clip on the podcast or something up uh, eventually but um, after the game made 40, 48 saves or whatever we got outshot 48-20 and I said to the coach after, I was like, I think this might be a, some leverage me, Sweeney's like, I might finally get my sticks because I'm running out. And I said, hey, coach, how about those sticks, eh? He says, you stop puck. You stop one more puck and then we talk. Next time, stop another puck. And I looked at Sweeney's, I'm like, I don't think I'm going to get those sticks. <laughs> I don't think those I, sticks I, are coming I, anytime I think soon. I said to you, I was like, you were never getting those sticks. <laughs> Well, I'm still waiting for the sticks. So if you're in Flemingsburg at the CCM factory, I'm waiting for my sticks still. Send them, yeah. please. Please, please. Um, but like like this is minor pro hockey right here. Like my sticks aren't there. I, I actually, so I went for coffee with a guy in Sweden this year who played Division One, And that's like a full-time salary. That's like the East Coast of Sweden. And he told me that he played uh, the year previously in the Czech Republic. And he was supposed to get Bauer sticks. He said, yeah, give me some Bauer sticks. Cool. He shows up and they give him Sherwood sticks that are like 10 years old. They're like, here you go. Here's your sticks. And they're like 12 years old. They're like, like the wood is like rotting out. And he's like, wood? They, they, were wood? they were wood? They were wood? They were wood. They were literally, he told me they were wood sticks. I wasn't there. I only met him at coffee once no or twice. No way. This is what he told no me. No shot. Yeah. <laughs> they gave him wood even, sticks in what, 2021? 20, um, that's a good 
question. I didn't ask the question, but I'll tell you one more story. Uh, this is that I heard from an agent. Um, there's a goalie who played in the Western League for like five years, U Sport goalie, like an a, a all star level goaltender. Signs to play, I believe, in Hungary. Signed to play every game, every minute of every game. And he's getting paid real money too. Like we're talking about, you know, 3,000, 4,000 euro a month, which is basically the US dollar. So a lot of money in Canada. And uh, he gets a puck off the, the face one day, breaks the cage, kind of busts his nose kind of over. He's just like leaking blood. And he's like, guys, like, I need a new cage. And then coach says, you, you get one more win, then you get cage. Cage costs money. And the guy's like nose is like bent over, like like smushed over like a cinnamon roll. Like, you know, like the Pillsbury uh, like cinnamon roll cases when you bust it open, they kind of like squish out to the side. That's kind of like what his nose looks like. And he's telling him, you're going to play on Saturday. We're going to win. We get cage. New cage for the helmet after win on Saturday. Like this, this is like this is literally minor pro hockey at its finest right here. Well, I was I actually I I was going to chime in. I actually I'll, I'll do this one first. Um in Flemingsburg, um, I because I was coming from college and in BC College, you have to wear a cage. So uh, they said, "Yeah, they, we got a visor for you." I'm perfect, sweet. I don't have to spend any money. I come over there, they give me a Peter Sikora style one, like below your nose, and I'm like, I, I, I can't wear this. This is awful. Like this is this is brutal. It's like wearing a bubble. So I had to go buy my own visor, <laughs> like to play pro hockey. Like that's like, what a weird like it, you know. Those are things like in junior hockey that you're just like, or even if you were playing like CIS, like those are things that you're, you're expected. Like you expect to have those things. There's this expectation. And then you get to pro hockey and it's like, wow, this is a real business here. This isn't like, uh, this, like, this isn't midget where everyone gets everything. This isn't junior where everyone, everyone gets there. This isn't university. Like, this is like, you know, guys are getting paid more. Um, they're getting extra things, like extra things in the scrubs. You know, you don't get much. And then if you're on a t- on a team like that we played on, you, you get nothing. Well, and two, like the on paper where we, where we played in Stockholm was Division Two, which is like if you're on the video podcast, is about here. Where I went to Varberg was down level down here. But the way things were done in Varberg and the competitive level of this Division Three, I would say it's the opposite. So Varberg should have been the Division Two, and Flemingsburg should have been the Division Three, but there is no real true um like equality with with pro hockey like every, like, the, like like there's no like true measuring stick if that makes sense like everything is different across different levels and how professional they are the money that they have and, and all the other things we talked about because money is what makes the world go round in minor pro hockey it's not like midget hockey where guys pay twenty thousand dollars a year to play for the winnipeg wild triple a and you get everything included well yeah you get 20 or you get 22 23 guys paying 20 grand a year yeah that'll get you pretty far when you have the guys paying nothing and the team pays the guys, it's significantly less. And like even like the the visa situation, like I've talked about previously, and I know Sweens and I have been on the phone. It feels like every other day talking about this year in Sweden. They want to quote unquote clean up Swedish hockey. I think it's BS because you relegated and folded half the teams in Division Two and Division Three. You have a new rule where the team has to apply and pay for the visa for all players. Players cannot play without a working visa. You can't come on a tourist. 90-day traveler's permit anymore. We're going to clean up Swedish hockey by getting rid of every single import. Why would a team want me when they have to invest $5,000 up front? And you say, $5,000? How does that work? Visa application is two fifty. dollars Insurance for me to come across. Traveler's insurance is $2,000. My, tra- my import card, $2,000. The fees start adding up here, and you have to pay for it, not me, and you have to apply for it. And you can get a European who is free. There is uh, a team that reached out to my agent uh, not too long ago, and they said, we need a goalie. We need a goalie who's good because we're making a push. We're going to go Division Two from Division Three. Like We had the, the firepower, but we're going to go. And my agent says, Trav is the perfect guy. Like This is the guy you need. Sorry, we don't want an import. Well, why not? Well, money's tight. That import goalie that could get you to Division Two, you're not going to substitute in for a guy who's maybe not as good because all, all the Europeans have been swooped up. All the Europeans are gone. They've signed. So you're going to sacrifice a couple bucks for the goaltending side of things, and you're going to get pumped and still be in Division Three when it comes to advancement for next season. But that's minor pro hockey. That's how things go. Like, there is no, hey, um, HR, they have a new visa rule. I don't like it. Like, this isn't Starbucks. There's, there's no HR. There's no manager you talk to that's going to sort it out for you. You got a problem? Okay, well, you can go play somewhere else. We don't have to use this 125 week. You can go find it somewhere else if you want because I'll pay somebody else to do the job. Welcome oh. to hockey. 
I like I have a I have a EU passport and I like even this year when I didn't play like I still had agents reach out to me and ask if I was interested in coming back and like even this summer the same thing has happened like last week where I have a team looking to see if I am classified technically as an import having that EU passport is literally the best thing ever like it it is especially with what's going on right now it is such a like an easy gateway to playing overseas so if you have that if you have an e, if you can get an EU passport and you want to play hockey in Europe, get that thing. It helps so much. Um, I don't know if we have time to circle back to those Czech Republic stories. Have because a lot of people don't know. I actually played in the Czech Republic for a wee little bit, but if we can do it another well, time, I'll tell we you don't what. Have time. We are running out of time, and uh, that's going to be the podcast what, for this week. But we are going to save your time and save you money with our presenting sponsors, the folks at Sheath. Again, promo code Biscuit69. That's going to be in the video description down below on the YouTube version. Apple, Spotify, it'll be in the podcasting notes. Thanks to Sheath for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, my amazing guest, Liam Sweeney, for coming back on. It's been about a year since I had him on the previous podcast. Now he's on the new one. Awesome to have him. He will be back very soon on the new podcast. And uh, I believe Dave Wheeler will be returning next week. I'm not 100% certain, but hopefully Dave will be back soon. I want to say thank you to everybody that listens to the podcast, whether we're Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube, Thank you so much for all the support. Drop a like, drop a thumbs up, leave a comment down on the YouTube version, and we will see you next week, next Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern for the next podcast. Good night, everybody.